Disaster Class is part of the Readiness Lab, the home for podcasts, webinars, and training in the field of emergency and disaster services. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Perez. And I'm Wesley Long. And we're bringing you a fresh new take on disaster preparedness. Welcome to Disaster Class. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Disaster Class. I'm Jason Perez. And I am Wesley Long. Oh, you know what that means. Oh, my goodness. That means class is in session. Excellent. We're really excited for this episode. Um, you know, Wesley, in our introductory episode, um, I feel like I just need to go back and correct something. Um, one of the things we discussed was obviously why is preparedness important, but I had mentioned some specific um, statistics from NOAA. Yes. Um, for actually the 2020. 2020. 2020. Correct. But shortly after recording that introductory episode, um, they actually released the 2021 oh, figures. Lovely. Yeah. Are things getting better? Uh, well, let's uh, let's see the numbers <laughs> speak for themselves. Um, so do you remember how I said that in 2020, disasters top 100.2 billion Ah, uh, yes, dollars? with a B. With a we B, talked like about you said. B. Yeah. So would you like to take a stab at what it is for 2021? You said it was 100 billion. Billion, yeah, hundred billion for twenty twenty. Nah, you want to keep it about the same. Uh, you know? I'll go a marginal percent increase, okay. maybe a okay. hundred and ten, hundred and fifteen. Okay, well, billion. Try this one on for size. Yeah, a hundred and forty-five billion dollars for twenty twenty-one. So sad. I should have known. Yeah, but that's insane. Yeah, a big increase, forty-five billion dollars more. Um. <laughs> So 2021 saw a total of 20. 40%. Yeah. That's insane. Crazy. That's crazy. Crazy. Uh, so 2021 saw a total of 20 presidential declarations. Um, oh, and according to the notes, that's down too. That's, that's, that's down good. too. That's a plus. But more money. So apparently more severe disasters. Clearly. Um, and then 688 deaths versus 262 in 2020. Whoa. Now, of course, obviously this is not considering the COVID numbers, right. um, but wow. still a big increase in, in death. So, wow. For all you out there listening, uh, if you don't know why preparedness is important, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that's what the numbers but say. That's what the numbers say. So, Wesley, what are we going to talk about in this episode? All right. Well, before we get to that, we, we you know we're going with the whole class theme, so we got to talk about the syllabus segments. Ooh, yeah, the okay. things that we can look forward to in general uh, from disaster class. A couple different things. So, one, we have uh, prep. 101. Prep 101. Prep 101. As in preparedness. Yes, that's short <laughs> for preparedness because preparedness, that sounds weird. When yeah, it's too long. It. Yeah, so prep 101. And the concept there is we're going to break down a preparedness topic, right? So we're just going to talk about it. Um, you know, we might have some high level stuff in there, you know, like from you people with educated degrees and stuff. But then for us, normal people, people, um, we're going to try to change that lens, change that focus, the context of that, make it practical, practical. for us, you know, normal people. Um, <laughs> then we have a syllabus segment called the school of hard knocks. The school of hard knocks. Oh boy. Yeah, man. It's that, a good that school. That sounds uh, a little rough. It, it, well, it can be, but valuable. Okay. Valuable. valuable. And again, I like practical, valuable. right? The concept there is we're going to break down current events. You know, okay. something that has happened in the news, here, abroad, wherever. What can we learn from that? How can we break down that awesome. information and um, gain some value from it? You know, next is going to be story time, not nap time. Not right? nap time. The, no, but this I is want disaster nap time. class, not nursery school. <sighs> Fine. No nap time. Do I still get a juice box? That's debatable. <laughs> we'll have to look and see if we have any here in the shop. I want a juice box for story time. Because now I want a juice box too. All right. So so story time. We're going to interview individuals. Now, this is going to be, you know, a call to our viewers, right, and our listeners. We want to hear from you. Absolutely. Uh, we yep. are sorry. Can't be too happy about this segment. We're sorry about the situation that you may have been affected by. Experienced, yeah. What you've experienced. But we know that there's valuable lessons that can be learned. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that over the course of time through this podcast, the more and more viewers and listeners we get, um, we've already started getting some information in of individuals letting us know some of the things they've dealt with, and we're starting to to get through some of those. We want to hear from you. Yeah. What have you dealt with? What have you learned? 
what was valuable to you, what helped you make it, and what helped you survive. So we can just all learn from that uh, that knowledge sharing awesome. session. Uh, also, too, we're going to have guest interviews, right? We're going to um, interview individuals that are, you know, subject matter experts. Um, this might be in connection, like, with Prep 101, right? It, mm-hmm. You can just see the natural fit there, having, like, an adjunct instructor <laughs> come in and teach a different class, not a substitute, right? Um, but someone else that's very, very knowledgeable in the field. And then we're just going to almost like an ask me anything kind of thing. Um, again, hopefully get some information from you guys. We'll let you kind of know ahead of time who's coming on, what their area of expertise is, yep. what questions you guys might have that can help on a practical value. You know, send those in to us so that we can add that to the conversation so that your voices um, can be heard. And what is a class syllabus without study hall? Yes. Got to have study hall, right? Study. We got to have that opportunity where we can just, you know, make that information that we get valuable to us on a personal level. So preparedness tips and questions from our listeners, right? So again, the goal is going to be, we're just a conduit, right? We yeah. know some stuff, but we're just a conduit. We want to have the conversation open and evolve from you guys, right? So give us your, your questions, give us that data. We'll try to get you guys some answers. Tell us what you want to know about. Um, That's going to help fuel the syllabus, you know, that's awesome. kind of what we got. Awesome. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, and as fun. you mentioned, you know, two of those are really dependent on our listeners. So yeah. uh, the, the interviews with the survivor stories, uh, the preparedness tips and questions, please write in and, and tell us um, and participate. And participating in disaster class uh, will also put you in line to receive some cool giveaways, uh, some merch. So nice. don't miss out on that. We do have a pretty cool logo. Let's just take a minute. And- <laughs> So, Wesley, what segments are we going to have on our episode today? Okay, today we're introducing Prep 101. Yep. Okay, guys, so we're going to we're going to start diving into some topics. Hopefully that'll be valuable to you as listeners, valuable to us to discuss. Um, And I think we have an expert lined up as well. Sweet. So, yeah, good uh, friend of ours. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this guy's talk about you're going to enjoy it. He's a great mentor. Good, good people's good people's. But the topic today that we're discussing is risk assessments. Oh, Big word. It is a big word. Well, or two words. Yeah. So it, it 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 is big. It's a big concept. But hopefully, we're going to help everyone see the value of us as individuals. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Oh. Well, that means homeroom is over. But That's don't go it. anywhere because we are going to see you in Prep 101. Disaster class is brought to you by Instinct Ready. Instinct Ready is working to educate, prepare, and equip the everyday person for disasters through comprehensive education and premium products. Disaster Class listeners can get 10% off site-wide at instinctready.com with promo code DISASTERCLASS. Shop items like the UPAC Pro, the most versatile, practical, and functional 72-hour survival system available. And learn how to plan for disasters with the Community Emergency Planning online course. Visit instinctready.com today because preparedness starts at home. Excellent. Yeah, All we're right. back. All right. Yeah, everybody settle down. Class, thank you. Thank you very much. Come to attention. I don't have a chalkboard to tap on or anything. <laughs> um, but welcome to Prep 101, okay? This is where we're going to uh, discuss, break down important topics, uh, preparedness concepts, yep. right? So now that class is in session, um, our topic today, Jason, is risk assessments. Risk assessments. Risk assessments. Can you start by telling us, what exactly is a risk assessment? Why that do we care an, about it? That is an excellent question. So a risk assessment is essentially a process to identify hazards or things that, that are going to hurt you and analyze what could happen if that hazard occurs. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Great concept. So why is it something that people should do? Well, that's a good question because, right, we're here. We're If you're listening, you're obviously interested in preparedness, planning for a disaster. Mm -hmm. If we want to prepare ourselves for a potential disaster, we first need to fully understand the things that cause them. Mm -hmm. Um, We need to understand uh, what is out there that can hurt us, how it hurts us, and how it can hurt our community. So Mm -hmm. a risk assessment is really a process to to break that down, to gain that understanding. Um, And then once we have that understanding, Um, we're going to be in a much better position to go ahead and plan ahead, put steps in place to protect ourselves. Sounds extensive. Uh, It's actually a lot simpler than it seems. I like that. But so we're going to talk about um, some tools. So um, 
the first thing that starts off with a risk assessment is identifying the hazards, okay. right? You got to know what, what, what those things are. Um, so these are, could be the natural, so-called natural hazards, man-made hazards. Um, but here are some, um, re- you know, some tools that you can use some resources to, to find that out. So for one, um, there's the FEMA app. Mm. You love the FEMA app, don't love you? Love the FEMA app. Yeah, it's actually, it's pretty uh, nifty. It's got some really nice features. Um, but one of the nice features that it has is it allows you to put in a city or zip code. Mm-hmm. And then it shows you the common hazards for that area. Correct. Kind of does all the work for so you. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yep. Um, Can't right. beat the price either. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, so we're going to, we're going to, all these things that I'm talking about, I'm going to put links in our description. All of these so you course can go. Course materials. The course materials, yes. Uh, we're going to put that in links in the show description. Yep. Um, and so you can download them and access them. Uh, the second tool is uh, American Red Cross. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a, um, an interactive map that has disasters by region that's pretty cool and useful. Yep. Uh, another one that's very similar to that is the Columbia University Center for Disaster Preparedness. They also have a very cool interactive map that's uh, it's pretty in-depth and it's got some some nice features okay. and uh, you can find your hazards. You need an acronym for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, our next resource is ready.gov. Yeah. So of course, this is the community um, website for FEMA. Yep. Um, a lot of really great information mm-hmm. on ready.gov. A lot. Um, it doesn't necessarily give you specific hazards to your area, but it has a lot of information about hazards in hazards general. In general. So yeah. if you want to know specifically about hurricanes or wildfires or cyber attacks, like they have a lot of different resources specifically, like what to do before, what to do during, and what to do after uh, one of those events. Now, another really good resource that I really recommend that you look for, um, is your local or state office of emergency management website. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of times they're, you know, they're more in tune to your specific region, um, and the hazards that you face in your region. So they, they might have some very, it's literally their responsibility to have done this work for your region for you. Yeah. So look, look for that resource. So in this case, it's okay to look at someone else's answers. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, that's this acceptable. Is a, this is a open open course. Like, open, yeah, open book. Op, open books. Okay. You know? Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Knowledge sharing is recommended here. Absolutely. Yeah, we like that. Absolutely. Cool. So, all right. So, all those links, we're gonna, we're going to be able to get all the walls. Yep. We're going to put that all in the show notes in the description, Beautiful. so you can access all those. Ah, oh, make life so much easier yep. for us to download these course materials. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So now, once we've identified these hazards, like okay, there's yep. a thing that can hurt me, mm-hmm. could hurt my family, could hurt my property, um, damage my stuff. What do we do? Good question. So we've identified them. Right. Once we've identified them, we need to assess vulnerability. Mm. Right. So. Um, because we don't necessarily need to prepare and plan for every single hazard. Right. Um, but we want to prepare for the ones that are really going to happen the most frequently and Mm -hmm. have the greatest potential impact, uh, for us in our community. Okay. Gotcha. So in order to do this, and we teach this in our class, our CEP Mm -hmm. really in depth, right? So this class is more like lecture. It's more like a concept. Uh, if you want to get into the lab, so to say, and, and get into the work, roll up your sleeves and actually do it. We teach this in depth in the class, but the conceptual overview is this. You make a list of the various hazards that you've identified in your research, right? So say you have five to 10 for your region. For each of this, you know, for each of those, you will then list its probability, right? So how likely is that thing going to affect you? How likely is it gonna happen? When will it, will? how likely is it that it will occur? And then you write down some ways that if and when it does occur, how that will impact you. So if there is a hurricane, right, how often do hurricanes happen in my region? When and if there is a hurricane, how how severe will mm-hmm. that impact be for me and my family and my area, right? And then also my community. And then what we do is we assign it a severity rating, right? If it's a low impact, low severity, high impact, high severity. And this process by doing that will help us to prioritize or triage, right? Which ones we want to focus on first. Hey, maybe you don't have a ton of time to work on this document. Um, You've only got like little snippets, 10, 15, 20 minutes. It's like, I'm just going to take one. For me and my family, I'm just going to do one at a time. But prioritize which ones you should do first mm-hmm. so you see how you can get the most value out of it. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the goal, right? Prioritization. Yep. Which one is the most important? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I should mention, too, that we're going to put a link into the description of where people can download the Instinct Ready Emergency Action Plan and Risk Assessment Template, oh. which is a really good resource. Um, Thanks, Instinct Ready. <laughs> our, our template... Um, it, it, it contains very uh, a few different worksheets that actually walk you through this this 
this process. Of course, this is another shameless plug here for our, our class because in our community emergency planning class, we actually go through this whole process of yep. performing a risk assessment. It's it's a pretty Literally long hold your segment. hand and walk you through it. Um, we actually do some examples in class together and we discuss them. So it's a really valuable um, thing. So if you're if you're interested in getting more information on actually how you go about doing a risk assessment, um, we can you can check out the uh, community emergency planning class. We'll put a link for that in the description as well. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So we've discussed a little about how, you know, we need to understand how a hazard can affect our community, um, what it can do to us as their uh, loss of property, damage, all those things. Very, very important concept to understand because, Mm -hmm. you know, we hear the term natural disaster. Yep. used pretty frequently yeah very frequently right like we it's tossed around another di- natural disaster right yep. <laughs> yeah but the truth is there's really nothing natural about that type of disaster right like if the uh, case in point if a hurricane occurs in a, a deserted island with no one on it yeah there'll be damage but the environment picks itself back up mm-hmm. and just goes it's it's kind of like the old adage you know if a tree falls in the forest and there's <laughs> no one there to hit, right so if there's no let's say socioeconomic infrastructure Yep. Then when something, when an event, a weather event happens, there would be nothing to destroy, mm-hmm. right? So, but in this sense, it's very important for us to realize that we do live in areas where there are those infrastructures in place, right? We have these community yep. lifelines that we all rely on um, as a group together, mm-hmm. right? As a collective. And when these things, when these events happen, like a weather event, right? it can affect and damage yeah. those things, right? It will have, you know, natural causes, but the disaster itself can result in complex social infrastructure and systems being impacted yeah. by that hazard yeah. because we don't live in the middle of the forest with no stuff. Yeah. It, it's a disaster is primarily a social problem. When we yep. use that word, it is, it's, it's the result of the social infrastructure and Correct. systems being impacted. And, Correct. and that's a really good point because understanding how a hazard is going to impact our complex community makeup yes. is such an important concept because you have your primary impacts of the disaster, but then you also have secondary impacts. And COVID is actually a really good mm-hmm. uh, example of this because for example, you may go throughout the entire pandemic and never get sick with COVID. Right. You may never as an be individual. as an individual being directly impacted yep, by the disease. Possible. That mm-hmm. may happen. And we, we hope that is the case. Kudos. For you. Um, however, there are secondary impacts as mm-hmm. a result mm-hmm. of that event. Um, and we have all experienced oh, that goodness. the supply chain issues, oh. right? Loss of income uh, impacts to your normal routine, yep. right? These are secondary indirect impacts of the pandemic. Yep. Um, another good example could be flooding. Mm-hmm. So for very me, common for me and my wife, um, we live on a hill yep. far away from any source of water. Sounds great. Does that mean I can't be affected by flooding? Yes, that's exactly what that means. <laughs> no. Oh. Um, so just because, you know, we may not have floodwaters rising up to our door doesn't mean we won't feel the impacts. We still right. live in a community. Mm-hmm. We have to travel to the store to get food. Have to we come have, off that hill to get stuff. Exactly. We have to go to work. <laughs> right. So if, yep. a, if flooding affects a part of my community we can still feel those impacts, right? What if we can't get to work? Now we have loss of income. What if we can't get to the store? Now we have, you know, uh, difficulty in obtaining materials. Loss of food. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, whatever others like toilet paper, you know? (laughs) So just because we don't have that direct, maybe risk of flooding doesn't mean we can still feel those secondary impacts. So when you do a risk assessment, really try to look Mm -hmm. beyond just your your house, your street, your neighborhood, look around. bubble. Try to get a really good understanding and a feel for your community because you are part of a community and you rely upon various things within that community. Yeah, and when we talk to our expert, we're going to use the uh, terminology, the dominoes. Yeah, and they'll understand. I, I, <laughs> hopefully, you guys will get the visual, yeah. the visual impact of that. Hopefully, that that segment makes the cut for this. If not, it'll be at a later time because he's just a fountain of wisdom. <laughs> he really is. All right, cool. So then, so then, let's review. So some of the things we just talked about at a high level risk assessment process to identify hazards, analyze what would happen if that hazard occurs. Mm -hmm. And we do this by researching the common hazards in our area, our geographic location, Mm -hmm. our specific location is important to run that assessment, right? We assess our vulnerability to those hazards, right? How and when they might affect us, how often, and how likely it is that that hazard will occur and how severe the impacts are to ourselves. Yes, mm-hmm. very important. 
but also to our community and the community lifelines. And we're going to be using that terminology. Uh, we probably should provide a glossary of terms, the yeah. community lifelines. We'll get back. We'll get into that further. They're a yeah. big deal. They All of us rely mm-hmm. on them every single day of our lives. Yeah. Um, and it's very important for us to understand that, how that fits into the infrastructure of our area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think you summed that up quite nicely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So I passed this class. You passed this class. Yes. yes. Okay. Awesome. But that was a, that was a lot of information. That was um, some data. That was, uh, but it, that's just a small aspect of it. You know, there's, there's a lot uh, more yeah, for us to learn. So um, when we talk to our, um, you know, our, our guests, um, we're going to dive into a little bit more about risk assessments and, and understanding. Really and cool he has some stories. really good examples. Yeah. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. He's good people. Um, and in future prep one-on-one segments, mm-hmm. we're going to discuss now. So we've, we perform a risk assessment. Mm-hmm. Now what do we do with that information? Right. What do I do with the data? So I have the thing. Now yeah, what? Exactly. So right. we're going to talk about that uh, in future um Ooh, Future. way to leave them on the hook. Yeah, so stick around. Come back if you want to so learn You can't more. learn everything in one podcast and uh, then never listen to us again? No. <laughs> I like where your head is at. I like it. So that concludes Prep 101. Yes. Um, so stick around, and then when we come back, we're going to have a really awesome conversation with a good friend of ours. Yeah. Love that. When you need an emergency plan, you need Doberman Emergency Management. Their expert practitioners use best practice, data, and career experience to help you. So whether you're buying a home and want to know about your local hazards, or you're a professional needing additional support, Doberman Emergency Management can help. Visit DobermanEMG.com today to learn more. Well, everyone, uh, today we have a special guest on the show with us. We have a good friend of ours, John Scardina. He is the CEO of Doberman Emergency Management. He's the host of Disaster Tough Podcast. He's an emergency manager with many years of experience and just all around a pretty cool dude. So, John, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm so excited to be on Disaster Class uh, with you guys. It's really exciting to be uh, on here and, um, you know, just to talk with you about uh, concepts of emergency management for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Wow. So as I mentioned, in case you forgot already, you are an emergency manager. Um, but our listeners may not know exactly what an emergency manager is or mm. f- even what emergency management is in that discipline. So um, could you begin by telling us a little bit about what it is that an emergency manager does um, and how you got into that field? Yeah, I feel like uh, before uh, the pandemic, I had to do a, like a dissertation every time I try to explain uh, <laughs> yep. what emergency management is. But um, in its truest form and most simplest form, the emer- an emergency manager is a coordinator at the strategic level, helping all aspects of the disaster life cycle. So whether that's planning for a disaster or mitigating disaster or helping the uh, tacticians, like the first responders in a disaster, or recovering from a disaster, whatever aspect of the disaster life cycle they're in, as at the strategic level, an emergency manager should be sitting there helping coordinate all those efforts. So my background, um, you know, one day, um, no, I was going to make a good joke about my parents. That'd just be weird. So um, <laughs> I've always been really interested in, I guess as a kid, I was really interested in emergency preparedness, like, uh, like, survival in the woods because i was in the scouting program Mm -hmm. and uh i liked first aid i liked that kind of stuff and um i started volunteering um i went on a two-year mission for my church and did a bunch of service projects there and had a lot of fun and i came home and i kept on volunteering like the red Red cross and um you know didn't really think i would ever gonna i was gonna turn it into a career Right. I just thought, oh, this will always be something part of my life. I like mm-hmm. helping other people. I like teaching. I like first aid, like that kind of stuff. I switched over from, I don't know, every once in a while volunteering with the Red Cross or whoever uh, to I'm going to switch everything I'm doing. And I dove right in and I haven't really looked back since. And, um, you know, I've worked with federal agencies. I've worked in the private sector, as you know now, with Doberman. And I love it. I love the idea of helping people and managing or coordinating all that response. So you became an emergency manager. Um, you were working for FEMA at one time. Uh, I believe you were on the national strike team. What was, what was that right. kind of like? 
being on that so, and experience uh, some of these big like? and being and just yeah. witnessing firsthand some of these these large scale events. And I'm like the lens to focus things like for like the people that aren't super smart. What is a national strike team? That that's a good question. Good question. So in the Post Katrina Reform Act or PCMRA, um, there. So I need to back up even more. So Katrina happened. Mm-hmm. Didn't go great. Uh, <laughs> a lot of lessons learned. <laughs> yeah, there was that. Um, they Congress created this law that basically said okay, we need to have a team or team set aside that when it gets beyond the normal resources or understanding of local government, because we still have 50 jurisdictions with, uh, you know, way more than that, but we have 50 states Mm -hmm. that have their own jurisdictions and their, you know, um, you know, title 10, title 32 or 34. Um, They have all this different kind of stuff happening. So what happens when they get overwhelmed? Yeah. Well, FEMA is mainly a funding organization they go in there and um historically speaking they didn't do response they said hey here's a big check for response right so with pakemra they created the national strike team and segregated that into three different areas Mm -hmm. uh, identical teams essentially two in dc one in california the california is i would argue is the premier of the three um and we would get called in for specifically type one events A type one event in emergency management is like the absolute worst. Um, Mm -hmm. It can't get in terms of overwhelming resources and people and plans, like whatever's, whatever's in place is not working. Right. So they, when we didn't get deployed, we were a team of 32. Okay. When we got deployed, we were in charge of all the federal government response, not the FEMA response, the federal government response. And we, we worked directly with the state. So, um, like my team alone or my, my unit alone would grow to 200 people, but we had thousands, we had, you know, 26,000 people deployed. So, um, in in terms of that's like, that's the structure of, of why maybe Mm -hmm. of like, we, we were put in there because we didn't want to have another Katrina. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, you, you fast forward to hurricane Harvey, my team deployed to Harvey it was, uh, you know, to date, it's the, the most catastrophic hurricane in U.S. history. It barely made the news. You know, Maria made the news because of politics, mostly. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and because the response was a little bit slower. And so it shows you, like, the purpose of the, the national team. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, in terms of the, the pace, we would get uh, a deployment order. And uh, we had to be on a plane within two hours, typically. Wow. Um, and so we would go and we we would come home when we came home. So yeah. like the famous story I have is, uh, I think my wife was at a grocery store and uh, she left her phone in the car and I got a deployment order. Hey, I'm going out to uh, X event and um, she couldn't get picked up. So I, you know, sent her a text, you know, call a text, whatever. And then I saw her like five months later Wow. and like, Hey, see ya. Um, so big, uh, big shout out to my wife for being super tough, but that absolutely, was a lifestyle. Absolutely. Go team, go. You know, you're just, yeah, you're just you're just gone, and it's it's really good for our listeners to know. Like, you know, again, our our focus is like the everyday dude, the everyday gal, right? I'm I'm not sure if the everyday person knows that that type of infrastructure is in place for them and their community today. Like, that's what yeah. that's what the national government, you know, that's part of what we pay our taxes for. Like, that's. That's part of what is already been set up in the background mm-hmm. for all of us that literally impacts our lives possibly every day. Yeah. That strike team is ready to go to your house, to your town in two hours. That's right. That's um, awesome. We, yeah, it's um, emergency management. Like I said, dissertation, because you keep on, we yeah. keep needing to try to explain to people, but we are thoroughly integrated and we want to be integrated with what people are doing because. Right. Uh, it, we need more professionals. We need, mm-hmm. we need, I mean, you guys alone, right? We need yeah. professionals to teach the everyday person. This is what doesn't going on. have to think about it every day. This right. is what you should do. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know, like one of the concepts we've been discussing with our listeners is the idea of um, identifying, right, and assessing risk, understanding the hazards, how they affect you. And like you mentioned, really planning. And, and preparedness, it begins with that step, that risk assessment, right? That's how we start things. And on the Disaster Tough podcast, you've mentioned how you did this when 
I think it was shopping for a house. Um, could you walk us through like how one, how you perform that risk assessment for your home and family, you know, what tools did you use, but also too, like for our listeners, why, why would you like that? <laughs> that sounds extra, yeah. right? It sounds like, okay, like this dude's a nerd, right? And we're all nerds. So we love yeah. nerds here. Like this dude's a nerd and he's taking his nerdiness and like, but like, why? I, I would love to hear, and I think our listeners will value your experience with that. So I'll give you the perspective of the two realtors. Yes, two. <laughs> um, the first guy came in, and I, I already done this stuff, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But you know, the guy, first guy comes in, and he's like, he's like the typical like mid-level manager personality of like, I know everything. Oh, love those guys. And um, unfortunately for him, I am the best mid-level manager in the world because I actually do know everything. But uh, no. Um, so like this guy comes in and he's like, okay, based off of like your, what you want for a home, blah, 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 blah. You should live within this like big triangle. This is where we need to look for your home. So it's like, I don't really want to look, look there. And he's like, no, this is where you, you're going to look. Yeah, that's what the numbers like, say. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to look there. And he's just like, well, why? And I'm like, uh, I don't know, crime rate poor schools the infrastructure is like crumbling they haven't had any like economic growth in several years blah 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 <laughs> but thank and, you and uh, he was like it'll be fine you know he didn't think he didn't think about that at all right and that that right. wasn't on his game plan his game plan was get this person into a home and make my commission yep so fired him Boop, gone yep <laughs> um i don't know if you can have like a special uh, yeah, we'll, no, but, yeah we'll come up with a sting just for you maybe. yeah yeah thank you um but the next realtor came in and I said, I think I should tell her what I'm doing first before like we get into this whole thing. Yeah, of let's vet do. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I had pulled up my GIS, Geospatial Intelligence or Ge Geospatial Information Systems um, map book that I made. And uh, I said, hey, here's my computer. This is where I'll move. This is where I won't move. And I mm -hmm. turned around and I had all the layers on at the same time. And she was just like, what in the world? <laughs> and I was like, I'm an emergency manager and it's, I'm really particular about where I live. Yeah. And she's like, okay, um, why? <laughs> and I was like, I'm a guy who goes out to disasters all the time. Right. And I can tell just by where you're, you're living. Like, um, unfortunately we have this, this phrase or this saying in emergency manager, emergency management. If you want to know where the tornado or the flood's going to go, look for the trailer park. Because yeah. they always build it it's a in flood planes, you know. Yeah, and it, it's really unfortunate. They put them in the most vulnerable area, and um, that, that's that's the the concept, right? Like it's it's not a guessing game. It's not a gamble. Right. There's numbers. You can actually, use data yeah. and science forecasting. And yeah. Yes. Exactly. So, um, I said I I don't want to deal with the problems, and mm -hmm. if I am going to have to deal with the problem, this is more important because you can't get away from everything. I want to know what logical steps I can take that I can afford, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like I might not be able to afford uh, fixing the foundation of my home because it sits on top of a fault line, you know, but right. what I can do is not live on a fault line or yep. Don't if buy there. I live. Yeah, exactly. Or if <laughs> I live in an area where like Louisiana, like virtually everything's a floodplain. Correct. Swamp. I yep. can choose how I, I can try to figure out how to mitigate, or at least I know what, I, what my hazard's going to be. It's going to be flooding. So yep. like, how bad is it going to be? Yep. Choose the lesser so of the evils. That's my why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not just stopping, but um, knowing what I have to focus on and more importantly, what I don't have to focus on. Yep. I don't have to focus on uh, a wildfire because I live in St. Louis. It rains. Right. But if I live in, you know, California, in the mountains. Yeah, that's a concern about a wildfire. So, um, yeah, the tools that I use um, uh, for the sake of conversation, there's a lot of different things you can do. So um, every state's different, but most have already created like, a, a, I would say a high level, nice mm -hmm. way to say it, a high level mm -hmm. version of like a, what's called, what we call a hazard vulnerability assessment. Mm -hmm. And a hazard vulnerability assessment essentially goes through all the natural and man-made hazards that could impact your house. Now there's the obvious ones like the, like I said, wildfires, floods, that kind of stuff. But then there's the less obvious ones like utility systems, crime rates, schools. Right. I like to tell people that 
uh, your school rating will determine your crime in five to 10 years. Mm. If you want to see if your house value is going to go up in five or 10 years, look at the schools. And um, that's, so that's the first thing I look at yep. schools, the school ratings, how are the schools doing? Um, is there crime at the schools? Next thing I look at is that my utility systems. Uh, my, my, I want to say fun story, but like my, ah, I told you so story mm. um, was, uh we had essentially a duration it wasn't a duration but it was essentially like really heavy wind storms in california where i used to live um in sacramento a couple years ago and um the the one utility company was notorious for having issues and the other one was not 90 percent of our neighborhood was on one utility company and 10 percent of it was on the other mm. and i specifically lived in the in the 10 percent side so when the wind storms came through all these old poles, all the stuff came crashing down. And our neighbors, it was like they were living in an apocalypse. They didn't nope. have they power. They were like well, stressing shut out, like down. All, all this problem. Yeah. And literally, you just turn the corner in our neighborhood, Good all go. the lights were on. Totally fine. Yep. And um, we were we were fortunate enough to have some of our friends in our neighborhood who was like, hey, come crash at our house for a few days or come hang out with us, um, warm up because it was the winter, um, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I think just like, just being aware, you can be aware, but not hyper aware. Mm -hmm. Like what problems do you want to deal with? So yep. that's, that's where I come up with it. And I do do GIS, but there's also community-based tools. Uh, does, Doberman is a plug for my company, but Doberman will create them for people who ask. Nice. Um, so you can ask, ask for an HVA and we'll do them for an individual home. Um, but the idea is that again, you we don't want you to have to focus on everything because that's not, that's cost averse. Yeah. Right. It's a, a big time waster. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's not, not realistic. It's not, yeah. I was going to say, it's unrealistic yeah. to, to be able it's to plan. It's not practical. That's yeah. one of the words we love to use. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's the whole reason why we're trying to educate the public on this idea of identifying and assessing risk. So they can yeah. really look at, break it down themselves and understand the full picture of, you know, of what's going to affect them. Yeah. So yeah. we'll make a, a shameless plug here because this is what we talk about in our, uh, you know, community emergency planning class, right? The, that class where we go into a community and we put it on for 10, 15, 20 families yeah. in a community so that that entire community can learn some of these skills, right? We have disaster class and, and we've been talking about the difference between disaster class and what we do with Instinct Ready. And really, here at Disaster Class, this is a concept, right? Concepts. We're just trying to have people understand concepts and get it. In class, this is the lecture, right? The lab, where you go in and roll up the sleeves and actually do the work, that's our community emergency planning class. That's where mm -hmm. we go in on an individualized level. You get a workbook, so to speak. You get to get out the pencil, not a pen, because you're going to be making erasures, right? You're going to go in there and get that practical value, but it's super, super valid. And we've seen that from that product, right? We see pockets of people taking the classes together, which we think is amazing because then they all get this shared understanding and this shared responsibility on the other side of that class after they get their certification and after they, get, they go through the course. So, yeah, yeah, we're not in bubbles, people. Yeah, and, and one of the, the key concepts that we talk about, too, is, right, what is your individual responsibility yeah. for preparedness and planning and yeah. in the terms of disaster. So one of the, the recent events we were talking about, John was, um, I, I 95 incident. Yeah. Happened not too long. All ago. these yeah. drivers being stranded yeah. for, you know, upwards of 24 hours yeah. in a snowstorm. Um, and I was just, I was, I was going through some of the headlines, you know, some of the news articles and consistently one after another, was the drivers are outraged that, this happened and they were blaming local officials and all this stuff and, yeah. and that they didn't have food. And like one one was said, like they were handing out water this morning. What good is water going to do for me right now? That was literally a comment that somebody made. So in, in your understanding of emergency management, like respond, like you have a, a crisis like this with I-95. Yeah. How much of the responsibility is on the individuals themselves yeah. and the responding agencies? Man, there's uh, there's the the quick answer, the fun answer that um, you know it's it's it you are still 100% responsible for you. Yeah. Um, the the humanitarian in me has learned that um, there's a lot of other factors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure. There's the blue collar job that says I pray. 
I, I'm just hoping that this hurricane or this snowstorm doesn't actually impact the road because if I don't go to my blue collar job today, yeah. I mm-hmm. don't pay rent tomorrow. Right. I have to go. They're not going to pay me if I don't go. Right. There's no snow days and, for work. Um, yeah. But uh, there was, I won't say his name, but there was one politician, at least one politician that was stuck on the highway for 27 hours mm-hmm. during that. And I was like, you don't have a blue collar job. Right. Like you shouldn't have been there. Um, <laughs> and so I, I think, uh, I, man, that's a, that's a tough call. Because it is tough. It, it's on them. It is on them. At the right. end of the day, you, you're responsible for yourself. Blaming anybody else for your problem um, is not only weak, right. it's inaccurate. Yep. Um, however, however, um, I think we can all be a little bit more merciful in the, and considerate. Right. Saying there might be circumstances here that I don't understand or... You know, like, how can I blame you for just not knowing? It's mm-hmm. now on me as the emergency manager to train you. Oh, and by the way, all those people on I-95, I guess I bet they're going to check the weather the next time they're going to go. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? So that was my exact thought with, with, with that train of thinking, mm-hmm. right? We could, it's easy to lay blame. And it's easy for the individual to say it's someone else's responsibility to take care of me. But again, our viewers, our listeners... Our recommendation to you, don't leave that to someone else. We all have a personal choice that we make every single time we go to the grocery store. And if you want to make the personal choice to have a few things that you can eat in your car in case you get stuck in traffic, make that choice. That's all we're saying, right? Like that's the whole essence of this of this podcast, of really of our business, right? The business that we created is you are in control. You go to the grocery store a couple times a month. You have the choice yeah. to prepare ahead. That's your choice. Do something. Yeah, you always you always have the choice to um to either make a to think ahead or not to think ahead. That's it. Yeah. And then to learn the, from, the right? The problem is... If you blame the, someone the else, the next problem. time it happens, you're going to think it's someone else's responsibility again. That's my issue in approach to life. I'm not that guy. I don't, right. put it on, yeah. I don't put it on somebody else. And kind of the, the big reason why I brought up that specific scenario, right? Because it kind of going full circle and back to what we were talking about mm-hmm. in identifying and assessing risk. Right. Right. You know, we know we have the weather reports. We know right. the snow is coming. Right. You've, you can turn on a channel, you can subscribe to alerts to get the, right. that information. But now it's, it's understanding, okay, you have that choice to either go out there or not. Mm-hmm. And maybe you have to, maybe like you, like you said, John, maybe yeah. there are specific scenarios where they had no choice, yeah, but to our be jobs, on that road. We have to. Like for us. Yeah. We like, have to, we have, we no have choice. to be at work. <laughs> yep. We but, get mandatory. Yeah. yeah. We have to be there. Yeah. Cause I have to have to jump in the ambulance. So when you call, there's somebody there. Exactly. Like we do not have a choice in those weather events. Data literacy is incredibly important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are. Yeah, there's one side of me who thinks like the world is becoming more data literate. Like mm-hmm. just like the way we interact in the world, we have to understand how data works a little bit better. There's a a big other side of me who who thinks that we are not. Uh, I don't know the right word for it, but like analytically literate. Right. And we see the data, but it doesn't sink in. Yeah, like weather reports. When it says 80% chance of snow, it doesn't mean that there's an 80% chance that it will snow. It means that there's an 80% chance that it will cover the area affected that it will, that they think it will snow. Right. We have a I'm going to take the bullet here for a second because I've seen it firsthand and I and I'm sure I'm guilty of it. We have a messaging problem. Mm-hmm. Um we 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 use the NOAA map that shows the cone of uncertainty and people think when they see the cone that is where the torn or that that's where the hurricane goes that's not where the hurricane goes right it is where the set any point within that cone just for like audience sake if you're curious could be the center of the hurricane based and the the, the width of the the uh, the cone is determined on how predictable they think that that point is right and the probability so it's a really wide co- mm-hmm. co- oh, oh, also with only five years so right. within the five years of data 
it's going to be a really big cone if they don't really know, or they have a lot of data and, and gets, and that's why when it gets closer to shore, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller because right. their data is getting better. Right. Mm-hmm. So the level like, of certainty is increasing. Yeah. But we get, we get hosed in the news when we're like, Hey, it, it might, we're going to shut down New York. That happened several years ago, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to shut down in New York because they're going to have a massive snowstorm. Well, the, 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 the snowstorm shifted 50 miles and everyone was like, oh, there was no snow in New York. How dare you shut everything down? Blah, 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 right. blah. You're like, okay, what other data in your life is perfect? Right. Like we're, we're using quantum analytics or quantum physics right now to try to figure out what other patterns. If you can explain that to me, by all means. Right. If you have a better system. To, uh, for literally, it's a moving target lest we forget. Literally. <laughs> Yeah. A moving target. Yes, yeah, a moving target. And yeah. it's not 2D like your map shows it is. It's a 3D object that's right. moving and shifting. And, right. Um, the and height change difference, different. that's going to show, you know, that's going to change the, the you know, how cold it is. Therefore, it's going to change what type of precipitation happens. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Exactly right, Wesley. Like, there's there's so many factors, and there's so many factors in everything. Um I did this thing uh, maybe two years ago about, uh, and I've been kind of on this train of, there's no such thing as the boy who cried wolf in emergency services. Yeah. Like you, you want us to be wrong. Yep. Like as long as being wrong puts you on the side of safety. Safety, hundred percent. Yeah. I say that all the like time, the, like with my go bags. Like I hope you never need it. Happen. Yeah. 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 Buy an expensive like go bag from me, and I hope you never need it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for uh, <laughs> for coming on the show. Um, so you can tell we kind of like you. Yeah, I think we kind of like you. This has been really fun. I'm <laughs> usually on the other end of this, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now for our listeners, you don't have to go too far to find John, because as we mentioned, he is the host of the Disaster uh, Tough podcast, mm-hmm. which is also part of the Readiness Lab. Um, Great resource, But, folks. John, uh, where can people also go if they want to find you and connect with you? Yeah, so uh man talk about the shameless plug moment so there's all you have lots of social media channels we gave you permission it's Um, okay you can do that (laughs) yeah so you can follow the disaster tough podcast um it is on linkedin twitter uh facebook instagram and we check that all the time we get a lot of comments there you could also just send us an email um now my email is a little different it's uh info at dobermanemg.com and that goes to the general email and uh they'll get that over to me but, uh, yeah, if you want to contact me, if you have a question about your emergency preparedness or uh, you do want to do a hazard vulnerability assessment for mm-hmm. your home, uh, you can go to DobermanEMG.com. That's E as in emergency, M as in management, G as in group, yep. emergency management group. Um, and so make sure you check out Doberman EMG or send us an email or so- social media. But I would say that um, if you really want to learn more about who I am, then you need to figure out um, – how to subscribe to Disaster Class because I'm hoping to come back on the show sometime. We'll definitely have oh, you back uh, on the show. Thank you. Yeah, we can't it's wait been, for that. It's been so great, like being um, being on your show and, and watching you guys uh, do this. And um, you, you ask really uh, intriguing questions, and I try to do stories, but essentially the questions you're asking are the questions that general public should be asking themselves yeah. uh, to figure out their own level of responsibility. And I think that's a, a great call out. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, John, for coming on. We'll look forward to having you again. All right, man. We'll see you. All right. So, Wesley, that was that was an awesome conversation we yeah, had with and, John. And trust me, that wasn't everything. You, We did yeah. not allow you to sit at his greatness for all that he said. Yeah. And he will be back. Like, he oh, yeah, we'll just, definitely have him back. From he is a fountain of information, that guy. Yeah. He is just so experienced. Yeah. Good yeah. people. Good time. Good people. So, before we conclude this episode of Disaster Class, as always... There's homework. <laughs> oh, I get to. Okay, cool. Tell them what so the homework here, is. Yeah, here's homework, guys. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe to Disaster Class, please. You know, we we want to hear from you. We want to make sure that you're connected. Um, you know, leave us a five-star rating. If you have to give a rating, like, let's not go less than five stars, because mm-hmm. why would you want to do that? Give us a thumbs up. Um, and most importantly, comment about something that you heard or you saw that you think is valuable to you, right? Um, Anything that you've appreciated from this episode, we want to hear from you.
Yep, absolutely. Um, also, if you have a question, you have a preparedness tip, a disaster story to share, send us an email at disasterclass at instinctready.com. Drop us a message on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. And doing so, will put you in the running to be featured on the show and also win some cool stuff. Love merch. Got to have the merch. Yep. All right, guys. So thank you so much for listening to Disaster Class. Stay prepared. Stay safe. Stay ready.